Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Wednesday, May 23rd, 2018, and here are some of today's trends in the news. On the market fronts, over there in Asia, down. Over there in Europe, down. Here in the States, you down all day, but closed up a little bit. And oil, bloop, a little bit mixed. Had that Brent crude popping over that 80 mark. I mean, back down again a little bit, but still up around there. And gold, well, beep, up a little bit, a couple of bucks. But gold is in that dangerous territory. Has to get strongly above that $1,300 an ounce mark if it's not going to move down lower. And you know our two points that we're looking for. Two, 1,275 on the downside goes to that, then start looking for it to go eh, 50 bucks lower than that. So, and Bitcoin, all those cryptos are getting canned, boy. Poof, lower and lower and lower. So what's going on? Stocks reverse losses. Finish up after Fed minutes show willingness to temporarily let inflation run above their target market level of 2%. Eh. So, they're easing back a little bit. So maybe that's why gold went up a little bit. But we'll see. And globally, the stocks Europe 600 fell 1%, while Japan's Nikkei fell 1.8%. It's largest one-day decline since March. All this is very important. It can't take higher interest rates, and they're giving the dough away over there in Japan, and they're still having problems with the markets. And the 10-year Treasury fell to 3.008%. And gold, again, it's where it is. The dollar gets stronger, gold goes lower. And oil prices, again, a little mixed, but here's why. A surprise jump in U.S. crude stockpiles and word coming out of OPEC that they're going to scale back on what they're holding back. Listen to these numbers. Commercial crude inventories surged by 5.8 million barrels in a week through May 18th. Gasoline stockpile levels jumped 1.9 million barrels a day. So, here we have it. Oil prices have gained nearly 20% so far this year. What does this mean? It's very important. And it's all in your Trends Monthly, Trends Monthly, Gas Attack, Recession, Inflation, Market Meltdown, Surging Prices at Gas Pumps, Hitting Just as the Travel Season Kicks Off, is a trigger that will set off economic and equity market ripple effects that will read all about it. It's all there, plus much, much more. As goes gold, so goes the economy. Driverless cars, as forecast, driverless fraud. Automation on the farm, ag bots and more. Researchers get first clear look at anti-aging enzyme. The latest plastic substitute, world without water. Saudi Arabia, then South Africa, now Israel. Oh, and now more war. It's all in your Trends Monthly, and that's just the tip of the Trends Monthly iceberg. Many more stories for you to read history before it happens. So, again, what's keeping the markets up? That cheap dough. And why didn't the markets go down? Well, the Fed said they may not be aggressive with their rising interest rates, so Sony changes tune in... EMI Deal, the Japanese technology and entertainment group, said it would spend 
$2.3 billion to buy controlling stakes in EMI Music Publishing. Mergers and acquisitions, stock buybacks, end of story, overvalued over leveraged markets. Because, bump but a bump M&A splurge adds to fears that post-crisis peak is in sight. The volume of merger and acquisitions globally has reached nearly $2 trillion this year, according to Dealogic, on track to beat the post-crisis high of 2015. See where this is going. So, what else is going on? Facebook, all over the news. Facebook CEO skips tough EU questions. Mark Zuckerberg apologized to European Union leaders over the fake news and privacy scandals engulfing Facebook, but rebuffed suggestions that the company has outsized market power and avoided responding to many difficult questions. Who else could get away with this? Ah, all of the economic elite and the political nobility. We the little people, we got to toe the line and make sure we walk that straight line when they pull you over and ask you how many drinks you had, where were you, and boy, did they get tough with us. Yep, as you see all these videos of cops shooting and harassing people while Zuckerbergs get a free ride. And boy, oh boy, the big entrepreneur opportunity. Once upon a time, there was a place called MySpace and my space vanished. So too could Facebook, particularly considering how many people don't like it. So, an entrepreneur opportunity, and you gotta watch the trends to see where the directions are going, making connections in a global nomic way between different fields. We talked about oil, we talked about gold, we talked about the markets. Copper, Dr. Copper, that's right. Copper is used in just about everything, from high-tech to low-tech. Industry to the highest in robotics, computers, you name it. A wide range. So as goes copper, that's usually a good signal of where the global economy is going. Copper misses out on commodities rally. After hitting nearly four-year high in 2017, Copper prices has slumped this year. A worrying signal for the global economy, even as stocks, oil, and other markets have rebounded. Very important. We talk about this quite frequently. Watch copper. And as we used to say in the Bronx, when we used to see the cops, what are pennies made out of? Dirty copper. And they didn't shoot you when you said that or beat you up with little kids. Now they would. U.S. banks log record quarterly profit. Isn't that great, huh? Interest rates going up. More deregulations. The bigs keep getting bigger. And we all become workers on the plantation in Slavelandia. And on those currencies, foof. That Turkish lira keeps getting lower and lower. Turkish lira drops to new low. That's right. The currency has now lost 13% of its value since the start of the month. Inflation in Turkey, 10.8% in the 12 months to April. And expected to rise further because of currency's recent weakness. The pressure from the markets comes as Mr. Erdogan over there, the president, is stepping up preparations for June 24th parliamentary and presidential elections. Okay. What's Turkey doing? Oh, they're fighting over there in Syria. Still got them problems with the Kurds. When all else fails, they take you to war. And... The Turkish markets are failing. Will they take them to war? Will things heat up in the Middle East? Will gas prices rise higher? 
as the flames of the Middle East spread wider. Stay tuned to that story. Ah, here's a good one. Putin's powers strengthen in response to U.S. sanctions. Russia's parliament has passed a sweeping bill that gives the Kremlin the power to ban exports to the U.S. and curb imports from Western countries as Moscow seeks to hit back against United States sanctions imposed on oligarchs in leading companies last month. All these sanctions have ever done is cause misery for the people. They've never changed anything in most instances. Ah, North Korea may be a different deal because everybody puts sanctions on them, including China and Russia, two of their neighbors. Oh, and now, by the way, Trump is signaling that, no, nope, they don't have to denuclearize right away. It's going to take time. And that, yeah, they may still have that meeting in June. So some positive news as well. But again, a very big story. It's the people that suffer from this, not the politicians. Economic ills drive Russia to cut armed forces budget. Oh, yeah, great. In America, they raise the budget. Matter of fact, when you look at what's going on, they got to raise more dough to make more bombs. Here we go. The U.S. is running out of bombs, and it may struggle to make more. Isn't this amazing, huh? Whew. The special inspector of Afghanistan reconstruction concluded that 1,186 munitions were dropped in that country during the first quarter of 2018, the highest number recorded for the first three months of the year since tracking began in 2013. Bombs away. Oh, yeah. Hey, look at these bombs in Damascus. Aren't they pretty around the area? And then you look at Mosul, and you look at Raqqa, and you look at all the other places where people get bombed out in this madness. I wonder why there's a refugee crisis. I can't figure it out. People should stay there after their places are bombed. Again, one country after another bombs away. And, you know, here in the States, they had another school shooting, of course, last week. And here's a story in the New York Times. Grim tally obscures statistical reality. Schools are safest place for children. Not according to a lot of people. People are getting very concerned about sending their children to school, even in rural areas. I hear it all the time. You never know what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen? Watch an increase in homeschooling. Interactive schooling. It's the future. This is an antiquated system of the industrial age. The facts show it in the United States. 65% of public school eighth graders not proficient in reading, 67% not proficient in math, and they keep raising our school taxes to keep promoting a failed system like every other system that the government creates. Homeschooling. And what else do we have here? I told you about all them bombs dropping away over in Afghanistan. Yeah, record numbers coming in. Doing a great job over there. Scores killed in attacks across central Afghanistan. At least 55 people were killed and scores of others wounded in a series of Taliban attacks across Afghanistan. And the strikes hit near NATO headquarters. They're losers. This war's going on forever. Wasted money, wasted lives, and nobody even talks about Afghanistan anymore. That's like a hidden story. Where are the protests? Want to stop violence? Stop it at the top. That's right. The fish rots in the head down, and America's violence in military conflicts around the world is a clear signal of the violent state of America. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's trends in the news.